Okay, so we're going to have a look at this function f of x is x into x plus 1 over 1 minus x all cubed. This is a really interesting function, although it might not look like it at the moment. So what's interesting about this function f is actually it's Maclaurin series expansion, which is basically its Taylor series expansion at point 0. So this is a nice way of writing it as an infinite series expansion in terms of your derivatives of the function at the point 0 divided by some numbers factorial and multiplied by powers of x. So we'll have a go at calculating the first couple of terms in the Maclaurin series expansion in just a moment, but you'll find trying to differentiate this using the quotient rule isn't the easiest. So what I'm going to do is I'll actually put it into a partial fractions form and then you can find that this will make it much much simpler to differentiate repeatedly. So I'm not going to go over all the details of how to put it in partial fractions form. You can pause and verify this if you like. But you get quite a nice format of 1 over 1 minus x and then minus 3 over 1 minus x squared plus 2 over 1 minus x cubed. So do verify that if you like. But basically this is really useful because now we can calculate some derivatives. So if you want to differentiate this, it's in a slightly nicer format, just three simpler chunks to differentiate separately. Differentiate this using the chain rule, you've got to the power of minus 1, but the minus 1 cancels with the minus 1 from the minus x when you apply the chain rule. So you get 1 over 1 minus x squared, so the sign of the whole thing doesn't change. Then here, same sort of story, you multiply by minus 2, multiply by minus 1 from the inner function, you end up with minus 6 over 1 minus x cubed. Then here, 3 times 2 gives you 6, essentially, and your negatives cancel once again. So this is quite useful because you know that f of 0, you can just read off from here, it's clearly going to be equal to 0. And now, f dash of 0, you'll notice your denominators are all just 1, so it is just as simple as 1 minus 6 plus 6 gives you 1. Okay, so f dash of 0, the first derivative at 0, is 1. Now let's calculate the second derivative. So we'll go through this a bit quicker. You just end up with 2 over 1 minus x cubed. Then minus 3 times 6 gives you 18 over 1 minus x to the power of 4. Then plus 6 times 4 gives you 24 over 1 minus x to the power of 5. Okay, so how does this help us work out the second derivative at 0? Again, all your denominators are just 1, so it's 2 minus 18 plus 28 gives you 8 as the second derivative at 0. And go on, we'll do the third derivative as well really quickly. This gives you 6 over 1 minus x now to the power of 4. Minus 4 times 18 is 72 over 1 minus x to the power of 5. And plus 120 over 1 minus x to the 6. The 120s come from 24 times 5. So this tells us that the third derivative of our function at 0 is going to be 6 minus 72 plus 120. You can verify this is 54. Okay, so let's start plugging these into the formula now for the first couple of terms in our Maclaurin expansion of f. So what does this give us? This gives us f of x is equal to, it's just going to be 0 over 0 factorial, we'll tidy up all the coefficients in a sec, plus 1 over 1 factorial times x, then we've got plus 8 over 2 factorial times x squared, then plus 54 over 3 factorial times x cubed, we don't know what the remaining terms are. So you end up with 0 plus, I'll write it in a strange way just as 1 times x, so you know the coefficient's 1. Here 8 divided by 2 gives you 4x squared, and 54 divided by 6 gives you 9x cubed. So this is pretty neat. We seem to have spotted that the coefficients in our expansion here are the square numbers. You've got 0 squared, 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared. What we'll do is we'll have a look at this in a bit more detail now. We'll have a go at proving that the coefficients in the Maclaurin series expansion of f are indeed the square numbers. Basically what we need to show is that this general expression for the coefficient of x to the n is indeed equal to n squared. And how we'll do this is we'll differentiate f n times term by term. So it's not going to be the most rigorous argument ever, but it should give a feel for what's going on and then later we'll show a slightly more rigorous way of doing this. But we've already kind of seen this pattern of if you keep differentiating 1 over 1 minus x, you just end up within the denominator increasing powers of 1 minus x, so here it would be 1 minus x to the power of n plus 1, and to get to this point you need to multiply by all your previous powers, so you end up with 
n factorial in the numerator. So you can already see this is going to be quite nice that the n factorial will cancel when we divide by n factorial. So let's have a go at differentiating the second term n times. So we'll be able to take out this minus 3 term as a factor. And what's particularly nice about this is that if you end up with 1 over 1 minus x squared, that's actually basically just the first derivative of 1 over 1 minus x, so it is related to our first term. So let's take out this factor of minus 3, and then you'll spot that this is actually the n plus 1th derivative of 1 over 1 minus x. So if you have 1 over 1 minus x squared, you differentiate this n times, that's basically the same as starting at 1 over 1 minus x, and differentiating n plus 1 times, just differentiate an extra time. And this is particularly nice because we can just use this formula here, increase the value of n by 1, we end up with minus 3 and n plus 1 factorial divided by 1 minus x to the power of that's n plus 2. Okay, and we'll do the same thing for the third term, differentiate n times. And here we're going to spot that this is actually the second derivative of 1 over 1 minus x. If you start with 1 over 1 minus x, differentiate twice, you get to this. And if you differentiate a further n times, it's just as simple as saying, oh, well, this is the n plus 2 derivative of your original function, 1 over 1 minus x. And once again, we can use this formula here, but we need to increase the value of n by 2. So you get n plus 2 factorial divided by 1 minus x to the power of, now it's n plus 3 in the denominator. OK, so now all we need to do to find a nice expression for the nth derivative of f is add up these three terms. So fn at the point 0 as well. This basically gives you n factorial. And you'll spot here your denominators are all just 1. So this is particularly nice. This gives us n factorial, just like before. All your denominators disappear. Minus 3 times n plus 1 factorial. And then just plus n plus 2 factorial. Okay, so let's divide this now by n factorial. So if you divide each of these terms by n factorial, you see loads of stuff is going to cancel. So n factorial divided by n factorial just gives you 1. n plus 1 factorial, all you're left with is an n plus 1 there, the minus 3. And then your remaining term, you get the n plus 2, n plus 1. So let's expand all the brackets here, see what we get, see what cancels. You end up with 1 minus 3n, minus 3, and plus n squared plus 3n, plus 2. So your spot here, oh, your plus 3n, and your minus 3n, they cancel. And then your 1 minus 3 plus 2, they also cancel. They'll just sum to 0. So all you're left with in the end is n squared, as required. So what we've shown here, basically, is that the coefficient of x to the power of n in our McLaurin series expansion is indeed n squared. So all your coefficients in the McLaurin series expansion of f are indeed square numbers. So now we'll try to answer the question of where does this function actually come from with this nice property? And hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense to look at it from this sort of perspective of, imagine you wanted to find a function where the coefficients in your Maclaurin series are the square numbers. Perhaps it actually makes more sense to start off with this infinite series here and then try and evaluate the series, see what you get. So if, let's imagine we wanted to start evaluating this series. Maybe a good starting point would be the fact that You've got the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of just x to the power of n, you know that this is 1 over 1 minus x if the absolute value of x is less than 1. Because this is the sum of a geometric series. So we know this formula. And what we'll do is next we'll differentiate both sides here. And we're not going to go into all the details, but basically this is fine within this sort of radius of convergence. We can differentiate term by term. So we'll end up with the sum from n equals 0 to infinity now n times x to the n minus 1. And we know that when you differentiate 1 over 1 minus x, you get 1 over 1 minus x all squared. And there's a slight sort of abuse of notation here. The zeroth term, if you imagine if x was equal to 0, you'd have sort of 0 times 0 to the minus 1. If you just take the zeroth term to be equal to 0, you don't run into any problems. So it's just a bit of an abuse of notation there. Okay, so what we'll do next is we'll multiply by x on both sides, so that then we get x to the power of n, then we'll differentiate again, so that will give us an n squared. So just multiplying both sides by x gives us the sum of n, x to the n, and we've got x over 1 minus x, all squared. OK, 
Okay, so if we differentiate now both sides, and again, we won't go into the details, but this is fine within a sort of suitable radius of convergence. If we differentiate again, we now get the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of, here it's n squared, x to the n minus 1. And again, there's this sort of little abuse of notation here. Just take the zeroth term to be equal to 0, and you're all good. Now, if we differentiate this, we'll actually have a go using the quotient rule. You get 1 minus x squared multiplied by 1, and then minus x times, you get minus 2 into 1 minus x. And when we divide this by 1 minus x squared squared, you get 1 minus x to the power of 4. Okay, so let's divide through. There's a factor of 1 minus x in each of the terms, so you end up with 1 minus x, and then you get minus x times minus 2, so plus 2x all divided by 1 minus x cubed. So your minus x and the plus 2x gives you an x. So I'll write this as x plus 1 over 1 minus x all cubed. Okay, and then all we need to do is multiply both sides by x, and you'll see that we get the original series of interest, sum from n equals 0 to infinity of n squared x to the n. This is now equal to x into x plus 1 divided by 1 minus x, or cubed. So this is perhaps the most sort of logical way to go about this and show that these are indeed equivalent to each other in a suitable radius of convergence. So what we've done here is actually really interesting. We've managed to encode an infinite sequence of numbers just using a really simple function here. And you call this function the generating function for this sequence of numbers, or the ordinary generating function. And while this isn't perhaps very impressive for the square numbers, for more complicated sequences of numbers, this sort of approach can be really useful. So for example, the Bernoulli numbers are really useful in analysis, but actually quite difficult to define explicitly. However, you can define them in terms of a generating function. So here, if you have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of your Bernoulli numbers divided by n factorial multiplied by x to the n, your Bernoulli numbers are essentially generated by this really simple function, x over e to the x minus 1. You could also generate them using the Taylor series of tan. And what we'll do is we'll have a look at a couple more examples just to finish off, have a look at examples of nice generating functions for some well-known sequences. So let's start off, let's have a look at a geometric sequence. So this geometric sequence is going to correspond to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a r to the n multiplied by x to the n. And in order to evaluate this, you just need to spot that, oh, r to the n multiplied by x to the n, this is rx to the power of n, which tells you that this is actually just a geometric sum, isn't it? So using your formula, you get a over 1 minus rx would be your generating function then for this geometric sequence, which is really interesting. And you can even work out your radius of convergence here, which is kind of get for free, is when the absolute value of rx is less than 1. Okay, so we've done the squares, we've done geometric sequence. Let's have a quick look at the cubes, and then we'll have a look at the Fibonacci numbers to finish off. So for the cubes, we've got 0, 1, 8, 27, and so on. What we're really interested in, though, is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of n cubed multiplied by x to the n. We want to know what function generates this. Okay, so let's start off with... We'll say our starting point is going to be that we know what the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of n squared x to the n is. We know that this is just x into x plus 1 divided by 1 minus x, all cubed. And what we'll do is, we're not going to go into the details, but within this radius of convergence we can differentiate term by term. So we'll end up with the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of n cubed x to the n minus 1. So in a moment we'll multiply by x as well. And here, if we differentiate this, I'm just going to skip over the details. You can check this if you like. But basically, you get x squared plus 4x plus 1, then divided by 1 minus x, all to the power of 4. Then multiplying both sides by x. So just note here, there's a slight abuse of notation again when n is equal to 0, but we don't really care about that. The 0th term is just 0. Multiplying both sides by x, you get sum from n equals 0 to infinity of n cubed x to the n. This gives you x into x squared plus 4x plus 1, all divided by 1 minus x to the power of 4. Unfortunately, this doesn't tidy up any further. But I think this is really interesting that this quite nasty looking rational function here, 
McLaurin series of this, the coefficients of x to the power of n, these will all give you the cube numbers. And now finally we'll have a look for a generating function for the Fibonacci numbers. We're using the convention here that f0 and f1, these are both equal to 1, and then the next term is the sum of the previous two. Okay, so this fact that the next term is the sum of the previous two, this is going to be our starting point for trying to work out a generating function. Because you know that f of n is equal to f n plus 2 minus f n plus 1. And within some sort of suitable radius of convergence here, we're going to be allowed to take the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of f n x to the n and say that this is actually equal to replace your fn by fn plus 2 minus fn plus 1. So, so long as we've got suitable absolute convergence, it's going to be fine basically to write it as the difference of these two infinite sums. And what we'll do next is we'll actually multiply both sides of this equation by x squared. And this is going to give us x squared multiplied by the sum from n equals 0 to infinity fn x to the n equals, and here I'm going to take the x squared inside the sum so that our powers of x match up with our indices for the f. So you've got the sum of fn plus 2 multiplied by x to the n plus 2, and then here we'll take one of our x's in the x squared outside and we take one of them inside so that now our index for the Fibonacci numbers match up with our powers of x perfectly in all three of these sums. Okay, so why have I done this? Well, let's imagine that, assuming this were to actually converge, let's say that this is equal to s, then what have we actually got here? This is basically the same sum as s, only we've started at 2. So this is going to be equal to s, and we've started at n equals 2, so you just need to take away the first two terms, which are, you can work out, your first term is 1, your second term is x. And what we've got here is the same thing, we've started essentially at n equals 1 rather than n equals 0, so this is even simpler, this is just s minus 1. Okay, so now if we tidy up both sides, what do we get? x squared s equals, we've got s minus 1 minus x, and then minus x multiplied by s minus 1. We take all of our s terms onto the left-hand side, what do we get? We get x squared, and then plus x times s, we've also got a minus 1. So all of your factors of s. Then on this side, what are we left with are non-s terms, so minus 1, minus x, and then a plus x. So you can see your minus x and plus x cancel. You're just left with minus 1 on this side. So this tells you that s is then going to be equal to minus 1 over x squared plus x minus 1 for some sort of suitable range of x here. And don't forget what s was. s was this sum. So what we're saying is then our sum from n equals 0 to infinity of the nth Fibonacci number multiplied by x to the n this is equal to, if I multiply top and bottom by minus 1 here, you get a slightly nicer form, 1 over 1 minus x minus x squared, which is actually a really nice simple function. It turns out that this function then, within some sort of suitable radius of convergence, is going to be our generating function the Fibonacci numbers.